Good morning and welcome to Rising. We have a fantastic show for you all today. Bacha Ungar Sargon is back with us uh, remotely. Where are you in the world, Bacha? <laughs> I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> ah, joining us bright and early. We so appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks All so much right. for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Yes, we're happy to have you. Let's get right into it. Coming up, we'll be joined by News Nation's Brian Enton to discuss Tuesday's upcoming debate between the Pennsylvania Senate candidates, John Fetterman and Dr. Oz. Plus, later in the show, we'll get into some new drama surrounding Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter, a favorite subject of ours. But first, the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices voted unanimously on Friday to add the COVID-19 vaccine to the agency's recommended immunization schedules for both adults and children, including toddlers as young as six months old. Now, the CDC does not have to follow the panel's recommendation, though it is widely expected to do so. If the agency endorses the updated guidance, then the new list would be published as soon as this upcoming February. Now, contrary to popular belief, the recommendation does not mean schools must require the COVID vaccine for enrollment. That's still up to states and local jurisdictions. The panel's decision comes just days after Pfizer announced that adult doses of their COVID mRNA vaccine will cost up to $130 a pop once the U.S. government stops subsidizing them. A Pfizer executive defended the price increase to the Hill last week, noting that the price tag was, quote, well below the thresholds for what would be considered a, quote, highly effective vaccine. Mm. Where are you on this news, Robbie? Hmm. Well, on the, on the earlier <laughs> thing I brought up, it, so it is true that this is not, and I saw a lot of bad reporting on this saying that, well, now suddenly this means for certain that these vaccines will be required of school children. It doesn't quite mean that. However, it, it is the case that many uh, municipalities will simply, just as we've seen with everything else the CDC quote unquote recommends, well, it's just automatic. They'll, they do whatever the CDC recommends. Uh, now, some states, you know, with red red jurisdictions might not do that. I saw, for instance, Tennessee, uh, the government of Tennessee saying, well, we're not adding COVID to the child immunization schedule, regardless of what the CDC says, which I think makes sense. But there will be certain municipalities that will just go along with this because that's what the CDC said. And I think that's very concerning uh, for a number of reasons. One being we know, you know, from just just from seeing in Washington D.C., for instance, when uh, where I live, when uh, schools tried to require vaccination on even very young kids, well, they they found out that uh, black and brown kids had much lower vaccination rates, and then they were going to just be missing school. So they they've delayed that. They haven't decided not to do that entirely. They've just delayed it. But that same thing could repeat itself throughout the country if. If this if if this if it goes this way, and uh, and I just don't see and and you know then we can go go into you know the debate over whether this is whether vaccinating against COVID is even necessary for young children whether it's enough of a benefit especially for kids who are otherwise healthy and have already had COVID which is like 80 percent of all children estimated um, it just it seems like much more trouble than it's worth. Yeah, I think to a lot of people, and increasingly not just Republicans, not just conservatives, and not just independents, but Democratic parents, um, this looks like part of a trend in which schools and education and government recommendations for children and what will be allowed for children um, is, is less about providing safety for children, education for children, things that will protect and promote them and help them become happy, healthy citizens of a nation and more like attempts to inculcate them into a very specific kind of regime and ideology, um, you know, that is very much based on, you know, what, what's called on Twitter, the current mm -hmm. thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that that is really a shame because what you, especially when it comes to children, you want to have some kind of standard that everybody can agree on, but increasingly that standard that many people, perhaps most parents agree on, is not the one that's reflected by the Democratic Party, the Biden administration, and the institutions like the CDC. Uh, Vinay Prasad wrote a really good piece on this for uh, Barry Weiss's Substack, uh, pointing out a number of issues he had with this. One of them being he's worried this will erode confidence in the vaccines that are already on the immunization schedule, uh, you know, measles, mumps, et cetera, vaccines that do satisfy a public health rationale because they prevent outbreaks of those diseases. You know, that's the 
we have to re recall that that's the argument for requiring people to get it is really not even for your own good, but for the public benefit. You know, we we say that we will override you know your freedom of choice in this in these cases because you know you could give it to other people and 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 if, if we. If you have to get this vaccine, if you're going to participate in public life, you're going to be in a public school, et cetera, that's to protect the people around you. That's not really an argument one can make with the COVID vaccines anymore, because we all know it, you know, maybe it has some effect reducing cases, but it's obviously so many people, we don't even call them breakthrough cases anymore because you can easily get and transmit it even if you've been vaccinated. And then to that point on the, the cost increase, now I don't, I, I assume. You know, some insurances will cover that for some people. Of course, not everybody has insurance, so that will. And then, you know, it's, sometimes it can be difficult to figure out well what insurance covers, and you get stuck with a bill anyway because our you know healthcare coverage system is so screwed up in this country. So you know, then you're gonna if you're in some sense additionally saddling uh, low poor people, low income people with that cost, and you're saying their children have to get this vaccine to go to kindergarten, you're gonna have more young people dropping out of the education system, which is a huge problem that that's actually, and we'll talk more about that in my radar, but I, I could just see that problem getting worse and worse. And for what? And again, not for, for, a, for a very disputable, a disputed, limited health benefit to, to some kids that many of our peer countries don't even recommend. Yeah, I have to say, I don't agree that it's going to impact the way people treat other vaccinations because precisely what you said, I think most people understand there is a difference between this vaccine mm -hmm. and the other ones that they can see with their own eyes and that the median American has arrived at the correct point of view, which is that there is a lot of scientific evidence for the measles vaccine and a lot less that this is going to be at least um, something that is necessary for children to protect themselves. And I think that um, that separation between where the average American is independent of party and where you know the COVID regime has ended up, it's not just the COVID regime, it's other things as well. There was a great clip yesterday um, circulating on Twitter about a panel, I believe it was on MSNBC, where um, the host had a, a, a Republican parent, a Democratic parent, and an independent parent, and was asking them about things like um, the teaching of sexuality in school, mm. wokeness in school, what their top priorities are, expecting there to be a wide spectrum. There was a black Democratic mom, um, a, a white man, and then I, I, I believe a, um, a Latina um, who was the independent. And Robbie, they all agreed. The, the the Republicans started out by talking about wokeness and 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 teaching kids about sex in school and how problematic that was. The black mom agreed. The independent mom agreed. It was just so funny. On each issue, there was so little that separated them, and yet such a gulf separating them from obviously what the host thinks and also her expectations of it and what the Democratic Party is is talking like these days. Wow, that's, uh, yeah, that tells you everything you need to know right there. <laughs> All right, well, we'll continue uh, this discussion uh, more from me on, uh, on, on COVID vaccines and uh, education in this country on my radar coming up next. <laughs>